All right, hey, it's Chad. We're going to go over uh, our defibrillators, the LifePak 20s. We're going to talk about some functions that we use all the time, some functions that we almost never use, and then some functions that we, we do never use, but maybe that you've never used them because you just don't know about them. We're going to uh, talk over all that stuff. We're going to start from the top, uh, and what I mean by the top is we've got these, these manual defibrillator uh, pads that we don't pull out. Uh, it's what you see on the TV shows, but I've never seen them actually used on this unit. Uh, so, the only time you'd really need to use them is if your hand free, for some reason, stops working. I don't know if you pull it out, you discover the line's cut, or you try to shock and it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, when you try to shock them, the next thing you should do is to move to these, uh, these manual pads. In order to disconnect this one, you're going to have to, there's a little dial back here, it's kind of rough around the edge, you have to turn that in order to pop this off. Okay, once you turn that, this will come off. Then you take the <coughs> connection from this other one that's got the exact same thing. You don't have to twist to put it on. Just grab it, push straight in, and then your hands-free pads are connected. You take them out. But for these to conduct electricity, you've got to have some sort of gel or something. <laughs> these are dusty. Some sort of gel or something uh, that's going to help them conduct to the skin. It's one of the shows you always used to see them do this number because they're rubbing the gel. We've got some of that gel, uh, but the neater thing to use, not neater because it's neato, but neat because it's less of a mess, uh, is, are these things that are on the crash cart. You take these off, open up this package, and they're kind of weird, slimy gel stuff, and you place them on your patient where you would normally put your pads, okay? And then you put these, uh, these manual defibrillators on top of their chest, and you want to apply a pretty good amount of pressure uh, on top of them. Don't just place them, you got to push them, put them on there and push. Uh, then once you've pushed, you've got to push both of these at the same time uh, and it'll discharge. Okay, so that's your manual paddles. <clears throat> Next, I know it's common sense, but we'll talk about it. You got your ECG electrodes here. For some reason, you're having trouble with these picking up or anything like that, just always make sure this is pushed in because these have a pretty loose connection here and they come unattached pretty easy. Turn it on on the on button. It's got nice and easy for code situations. It's got the easy one, two, three on here. Turn it on, select your energy, charge, and then you shock, okay? But if you just turn it on to kind of prepare because we always like to be prepared up here, turn it on, get your pads. Just like on our regular bedside monitors, you can select your leads. If you want to go to a different lead, see right here it's on lead two. You can choose your leads like this. Push lead and you can scroll between lead one, <coughs> paddles, lead two, and lead three. Okay. Push through, you'll get there. You can also adjust your size. Push home screen, up, get off of any screen you select. You can also push size if you want to increase uh, the size of your ECG tracing on here if it's too small. It's another way you can rule out if it's asystole or a coarser fine V-fib, you can increase your tracing and <clears throat> get a little bit better idea of what you're seeing. It may just be that the gain is turned down too much. Okay, we'll go home on that. There is an AED function, which we don't need up here because we're all ACLS certified, uh, <clears throat> but they do use this on the floor sometimes. All right, so some things that we don't typically use on here uh, is this event button. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody push this button before. I used to use this sometimes if I was fortunate enough to have enough hands on the truck uh, to kind of help me keep track of what drugs and things were going on in the middle of a code when I didn't have time to write it down or I didn't have a scribe. You can push event and it gives you a list of medications that you may be given to denison, aspirin, atropine, bicarb. Uh, you can select I'm doing CPR, dopamine, epinephrine, intubation. You can click more it's like IV access, nitro, oxygen, all sorts of stuff right here. Go back to the previous page. And if you went on there and selected one of those, it would chart what time you gave the adenosine, what time you gave everything else, and at the end you can push code summary and it'll print all that stuff out and what time that you did it. Anyway, it's kind of a helpful tool uh, if you think to use it in the moment, if, especially if you don't have somebody, something goes on, you don't have somebody carrying on the code, uh, uh, on the code sheet, you can use it there. So more importantly here, there's some of these other things that we 
uh, we don't typically use, but we need to know how to in the moment because we do get them every once in a while. If you got somebody who needs synchronized cardio versions, those are for our <coughs> our V monomorphic VTACs with the pulse or our uh, our narrow complex uh, rhythms with a pulse that need to be cardioverted. You're going to get your pads on, uh, your hands-free pads, you're going to go to sync, and when you go to sync, you're going to see, a, uh, when it's synced, you're going to see a green dot above every QRS on the screen. That lets you know that it's synced with your QRS, and it's going to fire at the right time. And so when you do select your energy and charge and you're ready to push shock, make sure everyone's clear, but when you push shock, it may not fire that electricity immediately because it's waiting to sync with the rhythm that they have. Um, so again, that's not defibrillation, that's cardioversion. Okay? So if you were having to do that to synchronize cardiovert someone, and when you did that, they went into a rhythm like pulses VTAC or VFib, and then you then had to defibrillate them, you would have to first hit the sync button to take it off of sync, and then you could go to your actual defibrillation, okay? Because it can't, if you try to if you try to synchronize cardiovert, VFib, or um, <clears throat> VTAC with, without a pulse, you're not necessarily going to be able to do it because it can't synchronize with those things. All right, so if you're, if you're needing to pay someone, again, that's somebody who's in an unstable bradycardia, okay? This is something you need to think of early because oftentimes in, in our unit, uh, people who are in unstable bradycardias do not stay there long. They are trending towards pulselessness. And so you need to think of getting these pads on and, and pacing very early in the scenario to see if you can maintain a blood pressure and maintain perfusion. But if you're going to pace, the first thing you do here is push this pacer button. Okay. When I do this without electrodes attached, it's going to alarm me, alarm on me, so I'm not going to do that. But when you push pacer, if it's on, you'll have a green light show up here on this indicator right here. Then it'll pop something up along the bottom and it'll have rate and, and milliamps. You can dial up your rate. I believe it defaults to 60, which is a fine rate to start at. Uh, a lot of times 70 will bring you a little bit more um, cardiac output because cardiac output is uh, <coughs> stroke volume times heart rate. Okay, and so if we can increase our heart rate, we can get a little bit more cardiac output going on. So set 60 to 70, I wouldn't go much higher than that unless a patient seems to need it. And then you'll set your current. It'll be in milliamps. It'll start at zero, and you're going to start going up on your current <clears throat> until you see a pacer spike before every QRS, okay? And until you generate the rate that you want. So if you set your if you set your pacer to pace them at 70, you're going to turn up your current to whatever milliamps, get a pacer spike, and generate a QRS at the rate of 70. Okay? <clears throat> this pause function is if you want to stop and see what their underlying rhythm might be, if they've actually picked up or if there's something different, you can push pause, and, the, and while you've got it held, the pacemaker will pause, and you'll see their underlying rhythm if they have a decent one and then you can let go and it will start pacing again. Another thing that you, uh, that, you might, that you might want to see or use for pacing is if you push the options menu, you can go to pacing, select it, and it'll tell you what kind of mode. So we can either be on demand mode where it tells us it's only going to pace, if I set my rate at 70, it's only going to pace this patient if their rate falls below 70, then it will start pacing. Or I can go over there and I can select non-demand and I will make them pace at 70. Okay, no matter what their heart rate is, I'm going to make them pace at 70. The pacemaker will be on no matter what. But again, if I go back to, um, dem if, I, if I go, it's not letting me, if I change modes, it's not letting me now. Also on internal pacer, uh, you can you can set it to where it's going to detect their, detect their internal pacemaker or not detect their internal pacemaker. Same thing that you can do on your bedside monitor uh, where you can turn off the pacing sensor if you're getting a lot of alarms, which we often do. Uh, you can do the same thing on here. Okay, and to get off the screen, you'll push home. All right, some of the last things uh, we'll talk about is under options. You've got several different things. It, you can push print and go back and print stuff. You can go to archives and look back at some of the uh, some of the past things that have been done, if you've missed something or if you've used this code summary and you, uh, you need to reprint something, you can go back there. 
Um, or you can, uh, what the chargers is go by and do every day is we will go by and do a user test. And to do that, <coughs> you've got to plug this end into the test plug. You got to line up the arrows. <coughs> you plug it in. And we, every morning we do this, we go to user test, push yes, and it, and it performs a user test where it fires and see if the defibrillator is going to work. Okay. Um, you can also go in there and change your alarm volumes if you need to, to be crazy loud or mildly obnoxious to I'm not alerted at all. Okay. <clears throat> so those are kind of some of the things that we use on, uh, that we typically use on this monitor, some of the things that we rarely use and some of the things that you might not have known about. If you got any questions, come find me or any of the educators and we can walk you through any of this stuff. Thanks for listening.